I was in junior high back then. There was this one boy named Kurt who used to bully me whenever we came across it in school. I still don't understand the cause of his hatred towards me. Maybe bullies are unreasonable. The more I tried to avoid him, the more his tortures increased. He would always find a way to make my life miserable. He pushed me in the hallway for no reason, dunked my head in the toilet when no one was around, and snatched my pudding almost every day. One day, I was about to go home after school when I saw Kurt waiting for me at the main gate. I overheard him saying to his gang, Let that shithead come. We'll have fun today. I knew he will torture me again, so I sneaked in from the back gate just to avoid any more trouble. I had to walk amidst the woods to get home because I knew he would be on the main road looking for me. I was so upset with my life that I didn't even care walking alone in the woods. Birds were chirping in the wilderness, and after walking for five minutes like this, I heard footsteps behind me, like someone was following me. I turned around, but there was no one. I turned back and saw a creepy-looking woman standing in my way. He gets on your nerves, huh? Um, sorry? That boy you're trying to avoid. How do you know? Do you know what the day after tomorrow is? Of course. It's the 4th of July. Our Independence Day. But why are you... You will be free soon. <laughs> the woman was dressed like a lunatic. Her hair was all messed up and mud was all over her clothes. The way she smiled made me feel like I'm standing in a dumpster. I got so freaked out that I started running at full speed. I looked back once and saw the woman standing in the same way, waving at me with an ear-to-ear -ear smile. I heard her screaming, I will set you free! <laughs> as soon as I entered my home, I slammed the door hard behind me and sat on the floor panting. Who was she? And how did she know about me being bullied by Kurt? So many thoughts were going through my mind, but I couldn't tell my parents about any of these. Our town started to deck up in the celebration of 4th of July. The mayor declared that a barbecue night with fireworks will be held in the city park. Everyone was feeling excited. Almost every house and store put up American flags to honor this day. My dad and I were fixing the U.S. flag in our backyard when something caught my eye. I saw someone standing across the street and watching me. It took me some time, but I figured out it was the same creepy woman whom I met in the woods yesterday. I froze in fear. Did she follow me home that day? She waved at me and smiled. Hold the flag. Help me, Dan. I came back to my senses hearing my dad's voice, and in that fraction of a second, the woman disappeared somewhere. I couldn't sleep the entire night. I saw a disturbing dream where the woman was standing near my bed and telling me, I will set you free. <laughs> right at that moment, someone pushed me and I almost sprung on my bed in fear. It was my mom. She hugged me and said, Did you have a bad dream, Dan? You look shocked. I gave a frail smile and said, It's nothing. She caressed my cheek and said, Come down for breakfast. Dad made 4th of July special pancakes. Everyone was so happy and already in the mode of celebration. Hence, I kept this uncanny feeling inside me and tried to avoid whatever happened so far. Soon after the sun set, everyone started to get ready to go to the city park for our special night. Bands and clowns were all over the roads. Everyone was crying in joy and laughing out loud. The entire town looked like a fairy tale with all those colorful lights and posters. My dad loaded beers on the back seat. This one night, everyone broke free. Soon we reached the city park and it was an even more exciting setting. Balloons and chains of light were everywhere. The music boxes played cheerful music and in the middle of the park, some people were seen installing the firecrackers. Kids were running around the ice cream trucks. The smell of freshly barbecued chicken made me hungry. I ran to get some just when someone pulled my collar from behind. Having fun, shithead? 
Kurt was standing there with his two sidekicks. He smiled at me in the meanest way possible and said, You think you're smarter than me, huh? Kurt, I don't want any trouble tonight. Just let me be, man. Oh, look who's talking. Relax, kiddo. We're all here to have fun tonight. I just want you to join us, that's all. I knew he was planning something worse for me, because to Kurt, having fun means torturing people. I saw my mom and dad standing far away enjoying with their group. Before I could call them, Kurt grabbed my t-shirt and started to drag me towards the secluded area of the park. The park is connected to the woods, and he took me inside those bushes where no one would notice us. He threw me on the muddy ground. Happy 4th of July, guys. Tonight's entertainment is shithead Dan. <laughs> All of his gang joined him. I sat on the ground while they went on humiliating me. Just let me go, okay? I've had enough. Oh, someone's getting angry. That's a change. What are you gonna do, moron? You gonna fight me? I'm telling you for the last time, Kurt. <laughs> Someone grew a spine. He came at me and grabbed my hair. The other two boys held me to the ground. Do you know what dirt tastes like? Let's try that for a change, shall we? Before I could say or do anything, he started rubbing my face into the muddy ground. Dirt and soil went into my mouth and nostrils, and I started coughing. I could barely breathe. I wanted to scream for help, but I didn't even get the chance. Suddenly, I don't know what happened, but he let me go. I fell to the ground on my stomach and saw with blurry eyes those two boys running away in fear, as if they had seen a ghost. I got up and cleaned my face. What I saw terrified me even more. That woman was standing behind me, and she grasped Kurt tightly with her filthy, bony hand. Let me go! Please, we were just playing! Dan, tell her we were just playing! Oh, really? That's how you play? Fine, then it's my turn to play with you. <laughs> what she did next will forever remain in my memory. She started scarring Kurt's face with her long, sharp nails. Kurt kept screaming, but right then the fireworks took place. The entire park lightened up with joy, and Kurt's scream got suppressed in those sounds. She then took out a knife and looked at me. I said I'll set you free. Happy Independence Day, Dan. She then slashed Kurt's stomach, and his entrails came out splattering blood everywhere. The woman rubbed her bloody hand on her entire face and laughed. <laughs> You are free now. Happy 4th of July. I ran to my mom. I didn't even look back for one second. After that night, Kurt went missing. His parents ran a search, and we told the cops what we saw that night. The two other boys said how a creepy woman chased us, and we ran for our lives. I even said the same. I didn't tell them that she killed Kurt right in front of my eyes. This is not my revenge. It's just better to let his parents know that Kurt is missing and alive than telling them he's dead and gone. That was the last time I saw her. I have no idea who she was and what she did with Kurt's body, but she set me free from the bully by captivating me with a terrifying memory for life. Before starting the story, I would suggest you guys to go subscribe to the channel. It turns out that most of you guys who watch me aren't actually subscribed. So, if you like the content and want to support the channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. My grandma had this weird ability to see things before they even took place. For example, she used to wake up every morning and put dog food on our porch. When we asked her why she was doing that because we didn't have a dog, she replied, You're soon to get one. That week, on my birthday, our neighbor gifted me a puppy. Incidents like this didn't bother us much in the beginning, but as time passed, her foretelling habits started to scare us. One day my dad was leaving for work when she stopped him saying he shouldn't go to the office that day, that something bad was going to happen there. After a huge argument, my father left for the office anyway. 
He had an important meeting that day, and because of Grandma, he got late. But as soon as he reached near the building, he saw the entire office was on fire. Ten employees died on the same floor where my dad was supposed to have his meeting. It seemed like she saved my father's life that day. After that incident, a weird belief grew in our house, that if Grandma's saying something bad is coming, everyone stopped and listened to her. My mom always lived with fear around her. I didn't know how my grandma did it. Out of curiosity, when I finally asked her how she could tell what was going to happen, she said, People tell me, only I can see them. I asked her who these people were, to which she never gave any answer. She only smiled and walked away. We never discussed her abilities with others, because we feared the townspeople would call us weirdos. But some things are hard to keep secret. Even though we all tried our best to keep this underground, we couldn't at one time. I was eight years old back then. My dad is the local sheriff, hence everyone knows our family quite well. One day I went to buy firecrackers and some decorations with my mom for the celebration of Independence Day. We were roaming around the shops when I heard a familiar voice behind me. Gina, here! I turned around and saw that it was my Aunt Helena. She lives across the street and is also a good friend of my mom's. My mom smiled and she came over to talk to us. Already started prepping for the 4th of July, huh? <sighs> you know Paul. He and Minnie are getting too excited this time. Hey Minnie, how are you? I'm good, Aunt Helena. Aunt Helena kissed me on the cheek and said, Come on, let's go for ice cream. We started to walk to the food court while my mom and she chatted about the big plans of the celebration. Every year, our town organizes a local fair, and that happened to be the main attraction of the night. We were heading home and I was in the back seat while my mom and aunt sat in the front. We were almost near the house when we saw a gathering in the middle of the street. My dad was standing there with the mayor and they were discussing something. My mom pulled over and we all got out to see what happened. We've decided to shift the Independence Day celebration to the ground behind the old church this year. As soon as my dad said that, people around us started to gasp in fear. A guy from the crowd said, But after that incident, Yes, Robert, we all know what happened there, but it happened 15 years back. I think it's time to move on. Also, we've decided to make it a grand celebration. For that, we need more space. The ground behind the old church will be appropriate for this. Let's forget the past and enjoy it for a day, shall we? Everyone agreed with him, and the matter was resolved. After coming home, I asked my dad, What happened 15 years back, Dad? He and my mom exchanged looks. Um, Minnie, it's not a very joyful story, but let me put it this way. In earlier days, we used to celebrate the 4th of July on that big ground. The church wasn't abandoned back then. There used to be a priest named Mr. Muller. One day, a man was passing through the church when he heard obscene chanting coming from that church. He peeked through the window and found Mr. Muller conducting weird rituals that weren't Christian. So the town people caught him and punished him. Do we have to tell her the whole story? My mom said in a tense voice. Gina, it's her town, and she deserves to know the history. My dad went on, but Mr. Muller was an evil man. He cursed everyone and said we will never be able to have any kind of celebration in that land. He claimed that area as his land. People ignored that and went on prepping for the 4th of July that year. On that very night of Independence Day, as soon as the fireworks took place, a huge fire broke out and many deaths took place. Now the townspeople have this superstition that the church ground is cursed. Well, maybe they're right, Paul. My mom said. No, no, there's no such thing as a curse. What happened 15 years back was nothing but an accident. A tragic accident. That's all. Everyone went to bed after a quiet dinner. Surprisingly, Grandma didn't say a single word that night. With time, the town started to buckle up for the grand celebration. People put up stalls and games on the church ground. I visited the place with my dad a couple of times, and with all the colors and decoration, the ground didn't give any negative vibes to me. The final night came and we dressed in our best attire. I wore a red frock that my dad got for me. 
We hopped into our car and started for the church ground. When we reached there, I felt like I have come to a fairyland. It was indeed a grand celebration. The fair was filled with people laughing in joy. Kids were running here and there. My mom and dad got busy with the local committee, so I went to get a cotton candy with my grandma. The cotton candy stall was in the corner of the ground. From there, the abandoned church building was visible behind the bushes. As soon as we reached there, I saw grandma's face turning pale. She stood like a statue and kept staring at the church. What is it, grandma? It's going to happen again. We shouldn't be here. It's going to happen again. What are you saying, grandma? I have to find your dad. I must tell him. My dad was helping in the fireworks preparation. I saw grandma disappearing into the crowd looking for him frantically. Before I could act on what just happened, my friends came and dragged me towards the game zone. I was a child, so to have fun, I let it go. I didn't understand the gravity of grandma's words back then. The celebration grew bigger. Everyone got louder. I was enjoying myself with my friend when suddenly my mom came to me and said, Minnie, where's grandma? She went to look for dad. She was being weird, mom. My mom didn't wait to hear more from me and started looking for her in a panicked mode. After a time, the mayor announced to begin the fireworks, just when a spine-chilling scream took place. No! You won't take my people this time! We all followed the voice and saw Grandma was standing near the cotton candy stall and warning someone with wide eyes. But we didn't see anyone there except the abandoned church building. I won't let you this time, Muller. This must end today. The entire fair went quiet, and everyone kept looking at her with frightened eyes. My dad rushed to her and said, Ma, what are you saying? Paul, we must leave this place. If we light the fireworks, none of us will live to see the sun tomorrow. He wants us all dead. What rubbish are you speaking? You're scaring everyone. Stop it. No, no, no. You have to believe me, please. Paul, let's listen to her. You know she can see things. Oh, stop it, Jenna. Don't make this more difficult for me. My dad didn't listen and addressed the crowd, saying, Light up the fireworks. She's just not feeling well. Everything's all right. The fair once again became alive with laughter and joy. The mayor walked to the setup and lit the fireworks. Colorful firecrackers started blasting in the sky, showering light everywhere. The townspeople awed in wonder after seeing this beautiful scene. My dad turned to my grandma and said, Look, there's no curse here, it's all bullshit. But before he could say anything more, Suddenly, a rocket misfired and flew to the big tent set up sheltering the stalls and game zone. In a fraction of a second, the entire fair got fire, and people started screaming and running around like mad cows. I don't remember how we got out of there, but I remember the sound of the fire truck coming and splashing water to extinguish the burning flames. Twenty people died that year. Those who couldn't escape burned down to ashes, and those who were admitted to the hospital passed away in two to three days. My grandma was one of them. I miss her, and I know my dad will never get out of this guilt of not listening to her that night. Our town doesn't celebrate the 4th of July anymore, at least not in a grand way. I wish we all listened to her, then lots of people would have remained alive. Every year before the 4th of July, I start getting nightmares. A memory of my high school days has cursed this auspicious day for me. I was a brave boy since childhood. My mom once told me she passed out on the couch during one rainy afternoon and forgot to lock our door. A thief snuck into our house and was ravaging the kitchen. She got up hearing the sounds and saw that man stealing our belongings. I was only 10 years old then but instead of being scared, I chased the man with a baseball bat, and he ran away like a coward. But even my bravery failed me that one frightening night on the 4th of July. I was 15 years old at the time. The Independence Day celebration was going around. My family asked me if I wanted to go with them to check out the fireworks, but I really didn't want to go. It had nothing to do with the fireworks. Actually, I wanted to go out and drink with my friend Cooper. 
we decided to break into the abandoned school building in our area. It was a hot spot for teenagers to smoke and drink without getting in trouble. I met up with Cooper and he had scored some pretty good stuff. I wasn't a smoker, but every once in a while I didn't mind. He was a bit worried that being the fourth, a lot of people would have broken into the school. But I assured him, saying so far we hadn't come across any other teenagers there. Like normal, we snuck through an opening in the fence surrounding the place. At that point, everything seemed perfectly fine. No red flags. There wasn't really anything to indicate that anyone else would have been there. We went behind the building and there was a broken door we used to get in. Still, there was no indication that we weren't alone. We found a room and began smoking and drinking a little bit. It was really nice. We weren't too far away from the fireworks display so we could hear the fireworks going off in the sky. We were probably in there for over an hour when Cooper gave me a really weird look. He stared behind my shoulder, looking at the passage outside the room, and said, Did you hear that? Hear what? The fireworks? He shook his head. No. I think I heard something over there. I thought maybe he was just enjoying a little too much. Cooper, you better slow down on the beers. You're already starting to hallucinate. No, man, I know what I heard. Someone's out there. He insisted, though, that he heard someone in another room. When I suggested it was probably just more teenagers drinking, he decided we should go look for them and see if they wanted to hang out. I really didn't care too much to do that, but I went ahead with him. We were walking down the hallway. It was dark, but we could see because of the moonlight coming from the broken windows. Also, the flash of the fireworks were lighting up the school now and then. We walked almost for five minutes and I still didn't hear anything, but Cooper kept telling me that we were not alone. There are people here other than us. I began to think that maybe Cooper was messing with me or trying to scare me or something. I had to brace myself waiting for him to try and scare me or something, but he didn't do that. I was getting impatient when suddenly I heard something as well. It was a firecracker. It had to be. I may have even heard it before, but mistook it for something from the display. There had to be someone in one of the other rooms letting off fireworks. No big deal, really. Fireworks were illegal for just anyone to have. The displays were done by the city. We came here for illegal drinking and illegal smoking, so it made sense someone might come out here for illegal fireworks. So we followed the sound and eventually found the room. There was an open doorway and there was a little bit of light coming from it. We decided to go through the doorway and introduce ourselves. Cooper told me he'd offer them smoke so they wouldn't take us as threats. I mean, that was the plan we had in mind. As we looked inside the room, we froze. There were two people in the room, but they had weird pig masks on their face. One had a pig mask, and the other wore a wild boar mask with long teeth. The pig mask guy was sitting on the floor with a bunch of firecrackers in his hand. The other was standing near a man tied to a chair. The man looked at us with his horrified wide eyes, but he couldn't scream, because dozens of sparklers were shoved into his mouth. And if I'm not wrong, they were about to light him on fire. The man with the wild boar mask had a huge sparkler in his hand. You know how when someone has a sparkler, they write words in the air? He wrote hi with the sparkler to us. We didn't say anything. We just stood there at a shock. Soon, the man with the pig mask stood up and made a creepy grunting noise like pigs do and clapped in a very freaky way. Um, hey... We were just heading home. Sorry to disturb. Before Cooper could finish his sentence, they sprinted towards us like a four-legged animal. We looked back once and those creeps were chasing us down the hallway. Run, Liam, run! I was running while gasping for air. Cooper was panting too, but we didn't stop. We had no idea in which direction we were running, but we knew if we fall or stop, these guys will not let us go. We saw a broken window right in the wall ahead of us. Without wasting a single second, we jumped outside from that window stomping on the ground. I took out my phone and dialed 911 on our way home. When the cops arrived there, they found that man tied to the chair like before, but his face was partially burnt with the sparklers in his mouth. 
He was rushed to the hospital and luckily he made it alive. When the man regained his consciousness, he told the cops those two guys abducted him from the highway. He didn't see their faces as they always had those creepy masks on. The cops are still searching for them, but I don't think they'll find those guys. But the most terrifying thought that runs through my mind almost every night is that maybe we haven't seen their faces, but they surely got a good look at me and Cooper. What if they come for us again? (laughs) 